Hey guys, Quiv the Lazy Geek here, and today we're going to track satellites. So basically, uh, I'm having a decent early evening. I know it's going to get cloudy later on. I'm also getting a lot of wind, so I know this is not appropriate for deep sky imaging yet. <sighs> I'm still waiting. But uh, recently, I've had in my head that I want to try to capture the ISS. And in particular, I want to capture the ISS while it has Crew Dragon uh, from SpaceX, SpaceX still attached to it. See if I can actually resolve it. Uh, now, I'll probably have to use in the end this little telescope there. Uh, but for today, I want to try first with this telescope to kind of track some random satellites. The ISS will not do any pass tonight, but I want to try to see like can actually you know, can I try to even track satellites uh, properly? And so to do that, I am going to use uh, SharpCap for capture. So I'm just going to connect to my uh, 1600 mm uh, cool that's uh, here connected to my Newtonian. And uh, it should be more or less in focus. Okay. And uh, what we're going to do next is I am going to open an application called SkyTrack. And SkyTrack is an application that is made to actually track satellites. And I've just re discovered it recently. I only used it once. Oh, it doesn't like to be full screen. I only used it once with this mount. Uh, it worked very well. The first thing that you want to do is, you know, to set up your site, which I haven't done. So I'm going to uh, go in there, edit the site, call it Tokyo. And now I'm done, I'm uh, now going to download my LTE file, which is basically satellite orbits. Uh, this piece of software, by the way, is not free. I'm currently doing a trial. I'm in, uh, I have 22 days remaining on my trial, uh, but uh, from my first impression, it looks really good and I'm probably going to buy it in the end. So I'm clicking download LTE file to get the latest satellite track data. And then I can go under the satellites tab and say that I'm going to recalculate and see what satellites are going to be visible or are currently visible uh, at what time. And there's um, this one there. And you know what? I'm going to choose a mount. So my um, EQ6 uh, mount there. And the reason that my mount is already pointed somewhere is because I actually use Nina to plate solve it and sync uh, to target so that the mount actually is already aligned and I should not miss uh, the site satellite by too much. And uh, now I'm going to connect to my mount. Hopefully it is going to work. Aha, my UTC offset. And I know what happened. So my uh, UTC offset there, and I just disconnected and reconnected the mount. It worked this time without an error message. Uh, the reason that we had this problem was that I hadn't saved my <laughs> coordinates in the setup uh, utility. So uh, since we haven't saved that, we can uh, recalculate everything here. Now we have the proper site. I am going to choose a satellite that's currently visible at an altitude of uh, 47 degrees right now. And let's try this time to start the satellite tracking. See if we get somewhere in the vicinity of uh, that satellite. So we can see the red circle is going towards uh, the satellite. I actually don't know how this system will react to the meridian. Uh, will the mount actually like flip or will it try to hit uh, the tripod? I do not know, so I am ready to turn it off. Uh, should something go wrong. This time, it seems we're going towards the satellite properly. Uh, let's have a look in SharpCap. We're going to pump up uh, the gain. And see if anything passes through. Wow, you can see the effects of the wind on that. Uh, it could simply be that my mount is not properly well aligned. It's moving now, trying to track the satellite, but I do not see the satellite going through. So we might be a bit off uh, from that, uh, that satellite. So what I'm going to do is I'm also going to I'm going to disconnect from this particular camera. We're going to connect to my uh, 533 MC Pro, which is on a small 50 millimeters lens. Oh, except that I forgot it doesn't work well with sharp cap. So we're going to try my 178 that's on the lower focal length. See if it uh, if that one sees anything. I 
and it's not working well in sharp cap either. We're not being very lucky here. I don't see any satellites streaming through. Uh, maybe I'm not well. Syn I haven't synced the mount well, maybe. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the tracking. Okay, and we're going to make sure that we are tracking sidereal so that the mount knows where it is supposed to be pointed to. And I'm going to open up Nina. And then we're going to do some plate solving in Nina to sink the mount in this vicinity. Then we'll go back to the satellite. Maybe the satellite will be gone by then, uh, but we'll have more satellites to play with. Okay, so I want to load the profile. I want to disconnect my uh, 1600 and then cool from sharp cap. I'm going to connect it in Nina. I'm going to connect to the telescope as well. We're going to go into the imaging tab. We're going to do, do some plate solving and run that. Now with the wind, you saw how the wind was like moving the whole equipment around. So we'll see whether I get decent plate solving exposures to actually do the sink of the mountain by how far the mount was off is also another issue. And we're two degrees away. Okay, so that explains it. Two degrees is definitely more than my field of view with this, uh, this telescope. So now basically Nina, what reference coordinates it's using, it's using the coordinates that the mount thinks it's pointed to. And actually, I'm going to just stop the process because I know it's synced. We're going to go back to here. We're going to start the satellite tracking. Okay, we're back. Uh, actually, I think I'm going to use the imaging uh, tab in Nina to do like 0 0.1 second exposures in a loop rather than sharp cap. See what we get. And we're going to pump up the gain again. Let's stop the satellite tracking. We're going to put it to sidereal tracking again, and we're going to do some plate solving. So the distance was very small. So I think we're just like something is wrong with maybe the satellite tracking application. We're going to start the satellite tracking again, see what happens. It's possible that just my coordinates are wrong. Yeah, I don't see us. Oh, I see it. There's actually a small satellite, a small dot that's going through the frame there. What oh, is so cool? We can see the satellite streaming through. So this is my preparation for the ISS. There it is. There it is, that little dude there. This is so nice. I'm loving this. We can actually track this little satellite there. Sorry for the picture quality because I'm connected to the remote computer that's actually connected to my equipment. But we can actually see it streaming by there. Oh, this is so cool. Oh my word, this is so cool. Wow. I wish we could see the, um, uh, the estimated brightness magnitude of the satellite to choose what we want to look at. I wonder, like there's no ISS passes soon, right? Uh, there is a satellite pass. Uh, yeah, no, ISS pass uh, at four degrees max elevation. Nope. Okay, I'm gonna remove that option, recalculate. We can go back to that little satellite there. Uh, we're going to go now to sharp cap since we're well aligned. Oh, this is so neat. We can see it there. Oh, so it's not quite well centered, but this is a good proof of concept, isn't it? There we have the satellite streaming through.
<laughs> I'm so hyped about that. This is so cool. I didn't expect it to work like that almost on the first first attempt, especially with a with a camera. And it just jumps to that satellite, you know, it doesn't track it directly, which is even better because then you can actually get a good picture of it. I think it got brighter now. It's actually brighter than it used to be. <laughs> so we're actually kind of getting off track. I, I see it more and more at the bottom of the frame. So I should be doing some kind of uh, adjustments maybe. Um, like another sink or something like that. But hey, it's in the frame. That's already a good thing. So if, if that were the ISS, I would totally take a video and it would be much brighter too. So I could simply like make the exposure time much shorter and we would be able to take images of the ISS. And I've never actually done that. Uh, so this is so cool. I'm loving this. So wow. So yeah, so this was a little, uh, my first attempt really was the, actually the first attempt with this mount, uh, this piece of equipment with this software together. Uh, I, I would call it a successful attempt. We see a, a satellite streaming through. Uh, so yeah, that is so cool. Um, I'm so excited. I'm, I'm not, I, I'm sure you can tell, but anyway, that's it for today. I hope you like this video that was, you know, useful or, or, or fun to watch. Uh, thank you so much for watching. But if you like this video, please click the like button. Please also consider subscribing to my channel and clicking on the little bell icon to get notifications when I get uh, new videos up. And, uh, and yeah, still this little satellite is there. This is so much fun. So, you know, don't forget whenever you can to look up at the stars and I'll see you next time.